Good afternoon, everyone. This is Quinny Clem with Quinny's Book Talk and Reviews, and I am your literary ambassador. And today I have a special guest on my channel. Please introduce yourself. Hello, I am author Natasha Frazier. I write Christian fiction, uh, romance, and devotionals. I've been writing since 2012 and just recently released um, my 13th book, which is book one in a new series, um, the McCall Family Series, and the book is With Every Breath. Okay, what is your genre and what attracted you to that genre? So I, I write in both um, devotionals and Christian fiction. And so for me, um, it's more so of a calling and um, my writing is sort of like an extension of who I believe God has created me to be. And so, and I've always loved romance. Um, some of the first books I read as a teenager were romance. And I tell this story a lot because um, I was about 15 years old and my mom used to buy those, uh, the arabesque romance books from mm -hmm. Walmart. And she'd buy them, but she wouldn't read them. She'd just leave them lying around the house. And, and one day I asked her, you know, can I read it? She's like, yeah, sure, you know, go ahead. And ever since then, you know, I just fell in love with romance. And whenever she would go to the store, it's like, hey, you know, pick me up one of those books. And I later found out that two of my cousins were also reading them. And so we would trade books, uh, read them, buy them, trade them. It was, that was our thing. So I've been in love with uh, romance since then. And so the, the Christian fiction portion of it, you know, I, even with romance, you know, Christians need romance too, you know, mm -hmm. God is love. And so wanting to share God's love and how God's move, you know, God moves in the lives of, of his children. So that's how we get to the, the Christian fiction romance. Okay, can you briefly describe what your book is about today? So With Every Breath is about um, Nina Marie Robinson. And she has been, uh, she's a motivational speaker. So she spent the last several years of her life uh, motivating others. But she comes to this point in her life where um, she herself needs encouragement because she has been diagnosed with um, a terminal cancer and told that she only has 30 days to live. And so with that, of course, she starts thinking about her mortality and all the things, her regrets and the things that she didn't get a chance to do. And one of them being her, her college sweetheart, Andrew McCall. And so she sets this course um, to reach out to him, to let him know that, you know, she's always been in love with him, never stopped loving him. Okay. What inspired you to start writing? Wow. Um, you know, once I started reading the, the romance novels at that time, you know, something sparked within me with me wanting to write. And I thought about it briefly when I went to college. Um, and I can remember I, my major was business administration when I first enrolled at Jackson State. And um, when we first get to school, you know, the freshmen go to school early. And so I was walking the campus with one of my hallmates. And she was, um, she had an English major. And so I went to the College of Liberal Arts with her. And I saw, you know, all the things you can do with an English degree and writing was one of them. And I thought about it for just a, a brief stint, but I'm like, you know, I, you know, I came to college to make money. <laughs> mm -hmm. So eventually I did change my major to accounting um, and the writing just kind of got put on the back burner. But as uh, time went on, the whole idea of writing was just impressed up on my heart even more um, year after year to the point where it was around 2011. And this was almost 10 years after I started college. Um, the whole idea came back again. And this time it was just so heavy that every time I went to church, I feel like the pastor was talking to me like, you need mm -hmm. to get started. But I had all these different excuses of why, why I couldn't do it. You know, time, resources, um, not having a platform and just not knowing about the business in general. And so one of the last times I prayed about it, I read Joshua 18 and three. And it says, how long are you going to wait before you take possession of the land the Lord your God has already given to you? You know, and in that in that text of that scripture is about the groups of Israelites who had not yet taken possession of the land that God had given them. 
Mm-hmm. And it just reminded me of my own procrastination because God said, hey, I've given this to you. You just have to go and get it. And so, you know, at that moment, it sparked something within me. Okay, I'm going to do it. But I came up with a whole different other set of excuses then. Like, okay, okay, God, I'm going to do it. But, you know, I need all these things to line up. And so I waited again. And at this time, about four months had passed. And now we're in 2012. And I was sitting at home uh, listening to T.D. Jakes on TV. He had gone off. And someone else had come on and I was just kind of listening in the background. But she started talking about um, this book she was supposed to write and how she had the title, uh, the title of some of the chapters, but she had never shared it with anybody. And she had gone to this prayer conference and a speaker called her forward and whispered the title of the book and the chapters that she had that she had never shared with anyone in her ear. And, you know, she went on to talk about how she still never wrote that book Mm -hmm. and how um, when God gives us something, it's not for us, but it's for his glory. And I just decided then that I didn't want to be the person sitting on something that God had given me. And so it was at that point, you know, that night I started writing. Didn't know how I was going to do it, well, but I started putting pen to paper because As we know, we just got to take the first step sometimes, which can often be the hardest one to make. Yes, yes, yes. What what do you think are the most important elements of good writing? So I would say um, knowing your characters. And it wasn't until recently that I kind of started delving into that more. It is so important to, to know the characters because oftentimes, the characters drive the story. It's their um, their life and their uh, whatever their conflict or their issue is that's driving the story to whatever the end is going to be. So definitely knowing how to develop those characters um, that can help push the plot along. Okay, that's the next question. How do you develop your characters? So uh, for this particular book, uh, one of the things I started with was um, I created, I actually pulled pictures of people that I wanted to play my characters uh, from the internet. And I created this little sheet of paper, put it on my wall so that I could see it every day. But then you, I start by asking, you know, questions about, you know, who you are, some of the main things, who you are, what do you want, and what's stopping you from getting that? And that's how I built the characters, um, our main characters from there. Okay, and what about, um, how did you develop the plot? And so the the plot is, uh, so overall it's a second chance romance, which I love second chance romances. And I'm from Jackson, I graduated from Jackson State University. And that's where both of my characters uh, met and went to school at Jackson State. And so I had known that I wanted to do a second chance romance based on that and that they would take a trip together, but I just didn't know how I would bring that about. And so earlier this year, um, I was experiencing these these spinning sensations, like it was terrible. Um, Went to the doctor and it turns out that it was vertigo. And so I was like, I know what I'm going to do. And so I... I gave those symptoms to my character and just amped it up by a thousand. <laughs> uh, so that's how we kind of, um, we developed her character based on that experience, that one experience that I had. And so for Andrew, um, we had to figure out like what would keep him, what would stand in the way of him just taking her back because he's always loved her. And so for him, it's something that he's always wanted, which is he wants to be a professor. Like he feels like that is his calling to give back to his alma mater and the students at JSC. So that's what he wants. And he's been working so hard for that. And so for the woman that he's always loved to come back into his life and, and drop this ball on him, how, how is he going to respond to that? And so that's how we kind of played and developed his character. Okay. How did you come up with the title for this book? Titles are always hard for me. I have two books sitting now that I don't have titles for. I always struggle with that. 
Um, it wasn't until um, after the book was edited the first time, I think that we started playing with um, titles and I was talking with my editor. She actually helped me come up with the title for the book. I always struggle with titles. It is so hard for me. Uh, what's the process of picking your cover? Oh, say that again. What is the process of picking your covers for your book? Oh, so this one was a little different than the other ones. Um, usually I have a graphic designer. Um, I just tell him what it is the book is about, and he sort of picks things out of, you know, what I'm telling him and mm -hmm. does an abstract type title. But this time I wanted, uh, I wanted to have people on the cover. They were a representative of who I thought the characters looked like and their personalities and they will show their love for each other because it it would take somebody to have strong love believe for the other person in order to go through what they went through together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so for that one we had to find a couple who would depict that for us okay can you share a snippet from your book absolutely okay so I am going to start reading at the point where Nina goes to Jackson State because she is their commencement speaker. And so Andrew, that's his name, has laid eyes on her for the first time. So this is their first meeting after about 15 years. Andrew loosened the winds or not that suddenly seemed too tight to give passage to the oxygen that needed in and the carbon monoxide that needed out, making it possible for him to breathe as his gaze rested on his heart, standing in the doorway to his office. The sight before him left him momentarily paralyzed, made him forget to breathe. Nina Robinson, in the flesh, more beautiful than the day she'd left and more stunning than she appeared on his TV or internet streaming services. Though he'd given the invitation to enter his office, she hesitated. She arched her eyebrows as if to question his certainty. Her slightly slanted hazelnut eyes still had a way of boring into his soul. His gaze traveled the length of her, taken in her bronze skin and five feet five frame clad in fitted jeans, a long sleeved emerald tee and sleeveless puffed vest. He'd mentally tried to prepare for the moment he'd see her giving her speech at the graduation ceremony. And she was four days early, too early. Andrew gently shook his head to ensure Nina wasn't a victim of his imagination, ran an open palm over his face and blinked to clear his vision. After the way she'd left him, the last thing he wanted was for her to know that her presence still had the ability to make his heart forget its purpose. He pushed back from the desk, stood, and closed the distance between them. Wow, today must be my lucky day. Come on in, Nina. He fought the urge to draw her into his arms, but Nina withheld nothing. Without an invitation, she thrust her arms around his waist and squeezed like her life depended on it. This had been the moment he waited 15 years ago, expected her to change her mind, admit she was wrong about them, and come back to him. Nina in his arms again had been like an eagle to his nest. Home. Mm. Wow. Thank you. What are the key messages in your book? Definitely having faith, um, even when things um, seem like they're just not going to work out, just holding on to their hope that God loves us and he's with us with you know, throughout everything that we're going through. Um, and definitely holding on to love. Um, and that love oftentimes is one of the key ingredients that can get us through almost anything that we deal with. What did you learn while writing this book? What did I learn? Um, that, you know, love is strong. We know that, but to, to see how this person, um, allowed an interruption mm -hmm. in his life. Um, and that sometimes interruptions are necessary to help us see um, things that we 
hadn't been able to see before. Um, a lot of times we view interruptions as um, the devil working, uh, but sometimes God allows the interruptions to get our attention and to let us know that, hey, I'm still here with you. Uh, I'm still here guiding you. This is all a part of my plan to draw you closer to me. Amen. What is your role in the industry, in the literary industry? So author, right now, a marketer, which is something I'm always constantly trying to grow better at is uh, marketing, uh, publicizing, uh, get my, getting my work out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Besides writing, publishing, and marketing, what was the most difficult for you? Ooh, I say that marketing is always it. Um, you know, having a story and that, that blank screen, a lot of times, you know, those first words, because that's what, what captures the reader. But a lot of times, you know, just moving past that blank screen, you know, even though you have the story appear, that, that first sentence is so important. And so that um, blank, that blinking cursor can kind of sit there for, for a while, you know. Uh, waiting for you to, to type those words that are going to get somebody to, to keep reading. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you hope readers to take away from your book? Oh, again, just knowing that God loves them and that even in the messiest of circumstances uh, that we can hold on to him. And that, and just trust that he has a plan, even when it doesn't look like it, that God has a plan for each and every one of us and that we all have purpose in his kingdom. What is life experiences have you have shaped your writing the most? Oh, wow. Um, You know, I don't know if it's any specific thing, but um, just day to day, because I can be inspired by anything that happens around me, whether it's something that somebody said uh, or does, it can spark something. And like, oh, you know, that's, that's good for the next book. Or, oh, that's exactly what I needed to hear to push my character along their journey. There are many times, even sitting in church, I've heard something that's like, that's exactly what I need. That's the answer to my character's problem right there. You know, so Pastor, you're not just speaking to me, you're speaking to my character too. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where can readers purchase your books? Uh, my website, natashafraser.com for autograph copies or they're on Amazon uh, for the Kindle book and uh, paperbacks can also be purchased online wherever books are sold. Okay. And where can readers find out more about you? Uh, straight from my website, natashafraser.com. Shoot me an email. I don't mind answering questions. Uh, Instagram, just under my name, author underscore Natasha Frazier. Uh, Twitter, same, author underscore Natasha F. And Facebook, just my name, Natasha Frazier. Okay. But before you go, I'd like to ask a few questions just about Natasha. Say that again? I want to ask a few questions just about Natasha. Oh, go ahead. Okay. What do you like to do when you're not writing? So I love movies, watch tons of movies. So if I'm not reading or doing anything literary related, we watch a ton of movies. Um, I like to swim, um, exercise. I exercise with Les Mills on demand. So I've been doing, lifting a little weights and I got me a little <laughs> muscle right there. <laughs> <laughs> so I really enjoy my workouts. Maybe one day I may think about being a, a trainer or something, but I really do enjoy that. Okay. What do you, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, when I was younger, I wanted to be a model. I oh. did. Um, but I found out I was too short. <laughs> so um, when America's uh, Next Top Model came out all those years ago, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go on that show. But they have a height requirement. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it wasn't working out. <laughs> what was your dream job when you was younger? 
I, I went through a lot of different things. At one point, I thought I wanted to be a firefighter. Um, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. <laughs> I was I was everything. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite food? Ooh, I love shrimp and I love mustard greens, but not together. <laughs> I love mustard greens. I'm looking forward to having some in a couple of weeks. That's one of my favorites. Oh, okay. And what's your best part of the day? Ooh, it depends on the day, really. Um, but I, I have to say, I do enjoy getting up in the mornings when everybody else is still asleep, having my coffee and reading the Bible. That's a really good start to the day for me when I can have that time, just quiet time alone with my cup of joe in the Lord. Your favorite artist and favorite song? You know, I have a lot. I love me some John Legend. I love John Legend. I love Brian McKnight, Johnny Gill. They can sing to me anytime. Uh, I love <laughs> Alicia Keys. I, I really like her music. She's actually the very first concert I ever went to um, years ago. So, Okay. And share something uh, your readers wouldn't know about Natasha. <sighs> um, something somebody would know. I told you about the swimming. Um, I used the coupon a lot, like heavy. I wasn't an extreme couponer, <laughs> but it was time consuming. So I haven't done it in a long time. Um, but I used to coupon and I got a kick out of it. You know, just <laughs> figuring out how much money I can go to that store and save or really not really saving, just spending on something else. But yeah, I really enjoy couponing. Well, it was a joy meeting you last weekend, and you are a prayer powerhouse woman. I enjoyed the whole thing with your presentation, um, your prayers. I loved it. Thank you for that. Thank you. Amen. All right. Is there anything else you want to add before we close? Uh, just come hang out with me. Visit me on my website, natashafraser.com. Uh, follow me on BookBub, which is my name, Natasha D. Frazier, or on social media. I don't post a whole lot. Uh, I probably comment more than I post, I think. <laughs> but just come and hang out with me online. I'm under my name on all the social media platforms. So. All right. Well, thank you for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me. All right. This is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews. Happy reading. Bye, y'all.